Hey guys, very quick tutorial today. I wanted to cover sets as part of the fusion particle system. It's recommended that you check out a couple of videos that I did that focus on the emitter node of the particle system. Those are linked up above. There's parts one and two. I'll link those one after another. So what is a set? Well, a set essentially is just that. It's a set of particles. So you can take all the particles in your system and you can break them down into specific sets. And then based on those sets, the other nodes in your particle hierarchy can affect only specific sets. So we're going to set up a very, very simple example. This is going to be, again, a very quick tutorial, but it's really just going to demonstrate exactly how these sets are used. So I've set up a very simple animation here. I have a sphere region. This is coming from my P emitter node here. I have 10 particles. To get these 10 particles, I've just, on the first frame, shot out 10 particles as my number here, and then it animates to zero for the rest of the frames. I've changed the style to blob, changed the size to one just so we can see things a little bit better. So that's it, pretty simple animation to start off with. So we're gonna add a spawn node and that's gonna spawn more particles off each of the, these source particles. And we wanna add that right after this emitter node. So what we're gonna do is we are going to click on this emitter node, shift spacebar brings up our, our select tool and then I can type P spawn and there we go. And then when I click add, it adds it directly into the chain right where I want it. Now, let's take a look at what's happening here. So what happens here is you can see these extra little dots that are showing up uh, alongside our other particles. So those have actually spawned different particles based on this here. So let's break this down and see how this works a little bit. Let's take a look at the P spawn node. So I have this selected here. And you'll notice if you're familiar with the emitter node, the spawn node is almost identical. It's got a couple extra options. And we're going to go through a couple of those options right now. So essentially what I want to do for the spawn node, I just want these to spawn a single particle and those particles will do something a little bit different than these source particles. So I want to keep things really simple here just to focus on, on the sets. So this P spawn node, what it's doing now, if we look at our main properties here, is we're spawning 10 particles per frame and they're all kind of on top of, top of each other. And you'll notice, the, you'll notice the velocity is matched its parent particle, right? Everything's kind of moving together. Well, that's because of this here. And this is one of the differences between P spawn and P emitter. We have this velocity transfer. So we have it set to one, meaning all the velocity of the source particle is going to transfer into the, the child particle. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to bring that down to zero. So that means it's not going to uh, be transferring any of the velocity. And now you can see these tracers kind of come in behind. And that's because each of these frames that are dropping off, if we were to zoom in on these, this would be little packets of 10 particles. So off we go. So that's all well and good, but I don't want to do this little tracer thing. I just want somewhere in here that these guys are going to spawn a single particle just to create our two different sets. So to do that, I can come up to conditions of the P-spawn node. And the conditions here has an age. And so what this age means is from the time the parent particle is born till the time the parent particle dies, it's going to be spawning these particles. So you can see how using a P-spawn node can get very exponentially out of hand, bring your workstation down to its knees if you uh, end up spawning too much. So one good way to control that is to use this age here. So if I were to take this somewhere and I'm gonna put it right in the middle, I'm gonna set it at uh, 0.43 and 0.43. You know what, let's use round numbers. 0.4 to 0.4. So what that means is 40% throughout the life of the parent particle, it's going to do whatever we define here. So again, I'm going to change this number down to one. So all it's going to do is essentially drop a particle off. And I'm going to take these particles here and I'm going to, and again, I'm in my P-spawn node. I'm going to come into style. I'm also going to change these to blobs, change them to a size of one just so we can see them a little bit better. And I'm just going to change the color to, let's go with a green here, bright, bright green. So now we have two distinct sets of nodes and we haven't set up what the sets are yet, we're going to get to that in a minute, but let's just run this animation here. So because I've taken the velocity of the P-spawn node and dropped it down to zero, these kind of just hang in space. Okay, so this is all well and good. Now let's say what I want to do is I want to take these and I want to have some other thing affect just this set of particles, but not the original set of particles. Or that's where sets come into play. So first of all, how do we define sets? Well, let's go into our emitter node here. And under our emitter node, we see this icon up here. This is our sets icon here. So this sets icon here lets us define what set the particles from this emitter come from. So we can only define sets 
from a couple different nodes. We have our P emitter node, we have our P image emitter node, we have our P spawn node also. So anything that generates particles, you can set a set on. So our P emitter, we're gonna call set one. Simple as that, that's now defined as set one. We're gonna do the same thing with our P spawn node. We're gonna come in there, we have the same icon here, and we are going to call that set two. Okay, so now we've defined our set. So we have set one, and set two. So let's say we wanted to put, you know, some kind of force on here. So these are little planes, maybe, and these are little bombs that it's dropping or something like that. I don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our, our P spawn here, and I'm going to go shift space again, and I'm going to pick P dir for P directional force, which is going to apply a force in the downward direction. And then you can see the original particles are being pulled downwards because that's the default uh, direction which is negative 90 which is down in this case that this new node is pulling all these particles and it's working on all of the particles so we can't even see the green ones because they're getting generated way down off screen so what we want to do is take this directional force and we want to say you know what ignore set one and only focus on set two so to do that we make sure this node is selected we come up to this icon here which is called conditions now conditions under here we see this sets and notice it's a little bit different than the source sets because it has this extra drop down here, the set mode. So if I go back into where the source was and I look at sets, all you can do is choose your set. But if I come into here, this gives us a couple different options of how we want to interact with these sets. So the first option here is ignore sets and that's pretty poorly named uh, in my opinion because it has nothing to do with all these checkboxes here. How I would read that is I would say, oh, ignore sets. Oh, okay, it's going to ignore everything with a checkbox. Nope. Ignore sets simply ignores the whole concept of sets. It's going to apply this thing to everything that's coming before it, which is what it's doing now. It's applying it to both set one and both set two. So if I were to say ignore set one, I would think, oh, okay, that's good. It's not going to ignore set one. It's going to let that go by, but it doesn't. Those still spill down. So that's something that's very important. What we really want is don't affect specific sets or affected specific sets. So for in, in our case, we want our directional force only to affect the second set. So we can do this a couple different ways. I'm going to choose uh, affect specific sets. I'm going to take off number one. I'll leave all the other ones on here by default. Those don't really matter. What does matter though is it's still going to be interacting with set two. So you can see now as we go through, here we go, and our new little green particles drop down. So if we're just, just to see, I'm gonna take off set two. There we go, now nothing is interacting with that set. So I put back on set two. That looks a little good, although kind of weird because they wouldn't drop straight, straight down. They would have some velocity. So let's go back into our spawn node and we'll take our velocity transfer and we'll bring that up to, not, not the whole number, but bring it up to something. So sets are as simple as that. And you can see that there's a number of sets that you have available so you can build up some pretty complex things pretty quickly. I do want to make a quick point about this P spawn node. It's a bit of a special node because it has, not only can you define which set particles that come out of this P spawn are associated with, also we have this conditions here because it accepts particles as an input as well. So I can actually set up this P spawn to ignore whatever sets come in from my previous part of the chain. If you want a bit more of an interesting example, you can come up to effects library, you can come down to templates, you can come to particles, and fireworks here, for example, is a good one here. So fireworks, you just click on fireworks, it brings it down here. I'm just going to sever this connection from my stuff, and I'm going to bring in the fireworks. And these essentially work in the same way. So you have your source particles, which are these first three. These spawn a bunch of other particles, and they use sets to do different things on those different particles. So that's it for today folks. Just wanted to do a very quick explanation of how sets work. For some of my next tutorials I want to start looking more in depth at some of these other nodes that act upon particle systems and then pretty shortly we're gonna have a full vocabulary of how all the different nodes in the particle system work and then we can start making some pretty cool stuff. Thanks for checking this out and I will talk to you later.